Hello. Hi, everybody. How are you on this fine Thursday? Is everybody doing good? I'm going to throw out a little air hug. feel the need to just give you guys a nice big air hug. Just one more. All right. That's how we can start out. So what have you been doing? Huh? Anybody have any tests? Are teachers giving tests out right now? I don't know how that works. Are you studying? I hope you're doing good in school. Anybody miss me? Do, 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 do you miss me? I hope you miss me. I miss you. I can't wait to give you guys big hugs all the time, every day. Woo, be ready for it. Here I come. <laughs> Let's see. What else? Guess what? The weather is supposed to get nicer. Yay! Hooray! Give that a round of applause. A round of applause. Yay, nicer weather. So it's a little cold out today, right? But guess what? This weekend it's supposed to become nice. Um, nice for us. I mean, you know, 50s. That's pretty nice. But in nice weather, like in, in the spring right now, is there anything special that you guys do at your house? Do you do anything special outside at your house? Does anybody grow a garden? I see a few hands. That's awesome. What is your favorite thing to put in your garden? You can tell me in the comments if you want. I love a garden with strawberries. Mm -mm. I also like to grow peppers and tomatoes and the thing with growing them i'm really good at starting out i'm just not really good at finishing the whole process <laughs> or like watering i'm really not good at that so basically i'm not good gardener <laughs> i do try every year but i'm just not that good but i thought since it's supposed to be nice and possibly some of you out there are going to start your own gardens that we should read some garden books today. And these are super duper cute. This one here is called The Forever Garden and it's by Laurel Snyder and Samantha Cottrell. And it's, I, I love this story, you guys. It's so cute. In sunshine and shower, in darkness and wind, honey tends her garden. Honey's knees are always muddy. Sometimes when it's cold outside, she tucks her garden in. Shh. When the lettuces are small and new, honey thins them. Her scissors say, shh, shh, shh. And the peas climb up. Honey pulls her beets from the ground with a shoot that scares the chickens. <laughs> honey sings to the kale. Oh, kale. Doo -doo -doo. She says it sings back but I can't hear it. Not even when I listen close. I hang on the fence in the mornings when it rains. Oh, honey feeds me tiny carrots washed under the pump. Yellow tomatoes the size of marbles. They taste like sunshine. When it rains, I watch from the window. Sometimes mom sends me to honey for an egg to bake with. Honey's eggs are pink and green, smooth and speckled. The chickens get mad. They scatter. <laughs> Presto, says Honey, as she slips an egg into my hand. The egg is warm. Each Friday night, I ask Honey to dinner. She brings bouquets of funny things. Squash blossoms, rosemary, raspberries on a prickle branch. Nothing matches, but everything fits. And the table smells like a meadow. On nice nights, honey eats in her garden. Beans and salad, a jug of water from the pump, tinkling cold. When the fireflies come out, I go over for dessert. Honey always has a cookie. I have two or three. But one day, there's a sign in honey's yard. Angry letters shout, for sale. What's up? I ask. Honey peers at the sky. Rain maybe? No, 
I mean, are you moving? Honey stares at the garden. Yes, she says. My mother is sick and she needs me. Oh, I say, I'm sorry. Me too. I kneel down. My knees get muddy, just like honey's. The next day I lie under the sunflowers and watch honey plant strawberries. Chickens doze, a bee buzzes. You know, there might be wasps where you're moving to, I warn her, or tornadoes. Honey turns to me and smiles. I'll miss you too, she says. I touch a strawberry leaf, dark and glossy. It trembles. The next day, I ask to plant a tree. Apples are my favorite. We dig and dig, I get blisters. But when we're finished, Honey says the tree will last a long, long time. Like a person, she tells me, but with flowers. I make a sign so people will know. Honey and Laurel's tree. And then, but one, oopsies, after that, mom has to remember to buy eggs at the store. They aren't speckled at all, and nobody eats in the garden. But one day, there are new people at Honey's. Lots of people, little people. They don't seem to know anything about gardens, so I help. Each day I slip over the fence to check on things. I weed the rows. I say hi to my tree. Sometimes I sing to the kale. And you know what? When the world is very quiet, if I close my eyes, I can almost hear it singing back. Isn't that such a sweet book, you guys? A couple things that I just want to say. To me, there's absolutely nothing better than digging out a tiny carrot from the garden. Mm, oh my gosh, carrots from the garden. Oh, so, so good. And do you know our friend, Miss Stella? I think there's others of you out there. But Miss Stella, she's our little chicken girl that I know. And she's picking eggs or eggs from her chickens all the time. I just think that's so cool and a little bit crazy, but I appreciate it because I like eggs. So I just I just love that. And then also, you guys, I just made cookies laugh, and I ate. Shh, don't tell anybody. I ate three. <laughs> but yes, I think that book is so cute. And gardens can go last for a long time, can't they? Super fun. Maybe if you don't want to start with a big garden, maybe you can start with a little pot. Give it a try. See what you think. See if you're a better gardener than me. I mean, I hear if you water them more often, it works. What do we got here? Hi, Miss Brinley. How are you, cutie? And then, oh, hi, Miss Lily. How are you? And then, oh, do we have Miss Ainsley? Hey, girl, how are you? Are you guys doing good? So good to see you today. One more, one more garden book, and this is called The Curious Garden. I think this is also really cool. And this one is by Peter Brown. It's kind of a fun name, huh, Peter Brown? There once was a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Okay, let's hold a sec. Who would want that? I love our trees. Oh my gosh, do we have just so much pretty trees here? They're big and they're all over and I love green and grass. Oh, I'd be so sad. I don't know what city this is, but I don't want to live there. I don't know about you guys, but I do not want to live there. <clears throat> Most people spend their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. However, there was one boy who loved being outside. Even on drizzly days, while everyone stayed inside, you could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway, as he did from time to time, when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. The railway had stopped working ages ago, and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for this curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped out onto the railway. 
The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wildflowers and plants were the last things he had expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew that he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned and he had a few pruning problems, but the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener and the plants began to feel like real garden. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway headed ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and the mosses were the first to move. They propped up the farther and farther down the tracks were closely followed by more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and the curious garden explored every corner of the railway. Look at it, you guys. How awesome. Oh, super cool. Oh, it's getting better. After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell the city fell on the city that season. For the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. After three cold months of snow finally began to melt and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. Winter had taken a toll on the garden, but thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. Look, he's singing to them. The garden has had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first. They popped up farther and farther from the railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. The garden was especially curious about old forgotten things. Look at how cool the garden. The garden's in that truck. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Others mysteriously popped up all at once. Oh, what's he doing? But the most surprising thing that popped up were the new gardeners. Look at everybody helping out now. Look at oh, all for cool. Look at those cool plants. <laughs> Many years later, the entire city had blossomed. But of all the new gardeners, Liam's favorite was there, was where it all began. So, the end. Oh, I love it. Well, I hope you guys maybe become gardeners. And if you have any extra vegetables, I'll always take them off your hands. <laughs> and then you can tell me how to garden, okay? Because I need some pointers. All right. Well, I hope everyone had a fabulous fantastical day and uh anybody have a joke for me oh i know harper shared a joke with me what has two hands but can't carry anything does anybody know hmm it's a a clock has two hands, but it can't carry anything. <laughs> There's your little funny for the afternoon. I hope everyone has a great day. Stay happy, stay healthy, be kind.